Welcome to Dano on Fire. Today is actually Valentine's Day, the day we are shooting, and my date for the morning is Asanka. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for joining me today on Dawn on Fire. Thank you for having me, Dawn. And I would also like to say a big thank you to Isso. I love this place, I've been here always, and I do crave for this burger always. Uh, these guys are all about supporting locals, so do come and dine and uh, you know keep our businesses afloat. All right, let's start off with cricket. So you're into managing cricketers. Yes, that's right. Are they drama queens? Oh, well, they can be. Yeah, times. I know, they can be demanding and annoying and all. Right, you tell me, cricketers are like politicians in this country. You reckon? I uh, definitely reckon in the garden. <laughs> all they coming in here. Uh, I personally feel because if they don't deliver, we need to get them out of power. Yeah. But it doesn't happen with politicians because they're stuck there for five years. But cricketers, it's, it's like literally like, like, there are so many waiting to go in. Yes, but the thing is, uh, we have identified this talent. And they are the people who come in and out. Sometimes they perform, so they stay inside. If they don't perform, they go out. And they perform in the local level, and they come back into the side. That's how it works. So it's always like you're reusing them and recycling them. Like, for example, sometimes we don't see the same faces going for all the tournaments. But there was a time, like in 96 and all, you had that same 11 faces on yes. the field always. I think that's to do with the consistency. And okay. uh, we, were, we were performing very well. Back in 96, we won the World Cup. And, and also we didn't have anyone, no? For like 10 years, we were doing really well. Yeah. Now, as we are not doing as well as that we used to be, so there's no changes to the side. But right. I think in the future, it will be changed because we have a young side now, and they're doing quite well. So I think this will change, and you will get used to seeing the same faces. Very soon. All right. So, Asanka, I just wanted to ask you, what made you get into cricket management? I always loved cricket and right. I always I was a big follower of cricket. So since I was following cricket I got to know the cricket players and I was I had all the contacts to do with cricket. So I thought why not make a living out of it and this is what I love. I think many people doesn't do what they love to do as their career. So I have the opportunity to do it and I grabbed it with both hands. So now let's go back in time. So you were living in London yes. always? Well, most of my life I lived in London. Okay. I grew up in Sri Lanka, but I lived in London most of my life. Right. If you're wondering what's this absurd noise that you hear in the back, it's not a bed losing control of with two people on it. It's somebody making fried rice. Just <laughs> letting you know. It sounds quite uh, naughty. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, and in London you met a few people. This Duminda, I'm telling you, he works. Just, I'm just going to heat him one of these days. Uh, anyway, so uh, there's so much of noise in this segment, it's not even funny. Uh, should we wait till he's done with his fried rice? So you have been living in London always, right throughout? I have lived in London most of my life. Okay. I grew up in Sri Lanka, but I lived there long. Who is your best friend in cricket? Uh, definitely Tiri Nakhandambi. Oh, okay. So you, you're, you're his buddy? Yes, I, we grew up together, we, we, so he was my good friend for okay. a long time. So let's go back in time. I also want you to try some food. They have prawn Ooh. spring roll and they have, uh, what do you call this? I'm supposed to eat it. Prawn tempura roll. Go for it. Yeah. He was losing weight as well to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right, so now I also like cricket. As I've said it many a times, I like to be a Victoria's Secret model. It's not that people are going to put me there. No. So you like cricket and how do you become a manager? Who offered you this gig? Who, where did you go for an interview? How can I do this? It, it, it doesn't work like that. It's all, all to do with the contacts you have. Okay. You have to have the right contacts in the cricketing world. So then you can get it. But you have to, you have to know what you're doing. You can't just become a cricket manager <laughs> and start managing. How do you get your salary? Like from endorsements, what these guys do? Yes, so it's from whatever I find them. Uh, for my players, it's I get 10% commission. And you have how many under you? Uh, at the moment, I have seven players in the national side. That's amazing. And what is the criteria to be managed by you? Uh, well, it's my choice to choose who, who, who I want to manage. Then we handpick because there are so many players, we can't manage everybody and it has to be beneficial for them as well as for me. Right. So if we see the talent when they're in under 19 or if they're in their early 20s, 
we see the talent and we see that he has a way to go, then obviously we approach them or they approach us. That's how it works. Do you? What do you think about the f the, the, the the female side of the cricket here? It is coming up in the world. Yeah, Unfortunately, in Sri Lanka, it's not that big. But, but if you look didn't at one Australia, of those girls like create like headlines? Unfortunately, I don't even know the captain's name. Uh, yes, yeah, Shamari Atapattu. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good manager. She, good she, manager. Was, she was. A, she was. She is an amazing talent. And yeah. Would you manage her? She has a manager already. Unfortunately, oh, okay. I don't <laughs> You should manage a few of the ladies as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I am looking into it. So uh, let's see in the future. But do you think this world is ready to accept that women can play cricket? Of course, it's already accepted. Like if you see the last World Cup finals, women's World Cup finals, it was a sold out in England. Wow, that's so, great. Uh, because I remember when the women's cricket team was here playing for T20 and World Cup. Right. There was nobody except the family. That's, that's unfortunately in Sri Lanka, it yeah. hasn't uh, picked up that much, but around the world, especially Australia, England, West Indies, there's a lot of following for women's cricket. Brilliant. All right. Uh, we have so much to ask from Asanka about being a cricket manager and also like uh, he has been spotted in media a little bit. We're going to speak all about it when we do come back. Do stick around. It's done on fire right here on night. Welcome back to the show, it's Done On Fire. We're checking out ISO and I'm talking to Asanka. Do people call you Asanka? Asanka. People call me Asanka. Yeah. It's I'm okay with anything. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Great. Okay, so uh, now in this cricket world, I know I can't ask you a few questions, but I do want to ask you, do you think if the game is not politicized, do you think the game will do better? Of course, but I don't think it's politicized at the moment. It has been at times, but now I don't think it is. You're trying to say that there's no political involvement in the cricket board at all? There always has to be political involvement because it's under the cricket, uh, under the sports uh, ministry. But I don't think there's like, nobody says who's playing or who's not playing. So it's not direct involvement. Do you think match fixing is something real? There is match fixing, of course, all around the world. but. I don't think this, it's happening in Sri Lankan cricket. Do you know secrets about the game that you will die with and you will never tell anyone? Not really. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything like that. Are you sure? Of course. 100%. All these assumptions of me saying like, you know, we purposefully lost it and gave it to India maybe. It's all conspiracies, isn't it? It's all assumptions. Nobody can prove anything, so... I know, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> why do you think I'm feeding you? <laughs> no, if, if, you, if you're referring to the World Cup in 2011... Oh, I, I didn't so. know, did, I, did I mention anything on that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's all made up stories. Oh, <laughs> well, you put the cap where it fits. We will let you think. You. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> if you lose your players, you know what happened. <laughs> Alright, uh, are you... Are you okay? Yeah. Then fine. Then fine. So, um, in this creative world, you have met so many people, spoken to so many people. If you could create your own team, tell me three people who you'd like to add into this current team. From the past, <coughs> way past. Well, I think it's obvious. Uh, I would add Sanat Jai Surya any day. Yeah. Mahal Javadana and Kumar Sangaka. Okay. Those are the three? Yeah. Okay. Do you have to add a fourth? Lasit Malinga. Good, good choice. Good <laughs> choice. I've always liked that blonde hair bouncing all over the uh, field. There's something about it. Uh, now, this love for cricket sort of kind of died in the last few years. I think we have been just hit so bad. Like, Sri Lanka is anywhere country with 
every day bad news like you know newspapers will never go out of fashion we have something to print about so uh with so much of sadness around us the only thing that brings us joy was cricket and that was also disappointing us do you feel that the team is now on the right path we'll have winning moments soon definitely we are in the right direction we did well in the world cup and we have the right people and right places at the moment so i think it will only get better and we were in the bottom so you only can go up true or can stay there <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely go up trust me good i just, I just had to ask or please to eat i want you to eat <clears throat> yeah is it too early for you well that's fine Just eat. I love to eat. Have you tried food here? We're really eating for the camera. We're eating serious. You eat for real. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Have yeah, you yeah, I have. I have been here. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, now, no, if not for cricket management, what did you want to do? Hmm. Growing up, I wanted to join the army. Okay. And and. Uh, then my mother sent me to england so <laughs> that didn't work out yeah also my father died in the war so oh, she didn't sorry. want me to yeah, go on the same path why are you like traumatized <laughs> like woman but do you feel this is a better decision that you made yeah i'm i'm very happy with because you're still serving the going. country in some way yeah, yeah i like to think so i mean i'm yeah. helping out yeah, a lot of young guys so and i also feel what happens with the cricketers is that if they play a game so well end of the day they're just playing a game and boom they are recognized notice they on the news exactly. they become a brand and they don't know how to handle it exactly that's why you need a manager to yeah. guide them through that process yeah true now everyone sort of i'm sure you're close to lasit malinga yeah so uh everyone sort of misread him over the fact that he's very atrocious comments to the media or unfiltered speaking but wasn't that the original real person that we are all we still love him Yeah, I mean, with Lasit, I think he's very straightforward. Yeah. So he doesn't hide this. Uh, what he has to say, he just say. It. I don't think Sri Lankan public likes that at times because yeah. people here like like hide things, True. hide the emotions. So with Lasit, if you know him, you know who he is. Yeah, he's very honest. I'll never forget a statement that he once told me. He said, "If cricket has not recognized me, I would have been just some dog down the streets in Gaul somewhere." But that simplicity you don't always get exactly so. he's still the same person who started playing when when yeah. he started playing so he's very down to earth very good guy super so we have i've asked those questions that i wanted to ask now you can eat like peace only so the troubling questions i want to know are you happy with the cricket board yeah they're doing a good job great on that note we'll see you after the break back if you have not checked out this place it's right on top of iso uh, it's a place for you to come and enjoy something quiet and chill with your friends uh, in conversation with asankar and if you want to reach out to him if you are talented and in the field of cricket and you want to go further you don't write to him on instagram because he'll never respond so write to him on some other platform where how can somebody find your management well, there's a website okay. so uh, anyone can contact me through my website what is it called Field power sports management. Field power sports. Now, what are the other sports you're planning on getting into? At the moment, I'm okay Nothing. with cricket because it's a lot of work. So, when you're yeah. done with them, would you consider, like you know, promoting me, like an escort for the cricket team, <laughs> a mascot for the cricket team? Why not? We'll have a chat about it. I know. I, you know, there was Princey, right? Princey, right? Who was Percy? Percy. Uncle Percy. Oh my yeah. God! What a legend he was. He is. He's yeah, still he's, a legend. Yeah, of he's course, still he's still a legend. Yeah. But uh, why can't Why can't I be the one who is carrying his torch further? You need to speak to Uncle Percy about this. <laughs> But you know he has a bad temper. <laughs> I have just, witnessed just it. Just get him a drink. He'll be okay. <laughs> I know. I've witnessed it. But yeah. So shout out to Percy. All right. Now I wanted to speak to you a little bit about what is your future from here. Well, uh, future is. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm I'm happy with what I'm doing. So you're going to stick around. I'm going. Yeah. This this is what I I want to do. I always wanted to be something to do with cricket. So uh, I'm happy. Okay. You know I wanted to ask you something that we all tend to not see 
is the hard work that cricketers actually do put in, even if they win, lose, or even if they have just not even got themselves qualified into the game. Their work, their work schedule off the field is a lot, right? It is, especially especially with the new fitness uh, regulations. Regulations you know, and stuff. These <laughs> bellies are not welcome anymore. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. uh, it's it's a lot of work. People don't see what they do, what they go through, especially when they fail and when they lose. People think, oh, they, they, they don't care. It's not like that. If you're with them, if you speak to them on a daily basis, you know what they're going through. It's, so it's how of often hard. do they work out every day? Yeah. And how long should they work out for? It, it depends. They have a fitness schedule they're given by the cricket board, so they, they work on that sometimes uh, twice a day. Yeah, and it's like if you do, like I, I know a few of them personally, and it's quite like whatever, like even if they have like a wedding to go for, they have to sh somehow schedule what they have to schedule on the field and there is no tomorrow when, when it yeah, comes well, to Once game. I remember Kumar turned up to a wedding in his track bottoms because <laughs> he didn't have time to go home and he, get changed. And there was, it's either do it or don't go at all. Exactly. Yeah. I think you, you can be forgiven if you are Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, that's fine. Just come even if you're wearing nothing. <laughs> um, what is the biggest lesson you have learned out of working with cricketers, like personally for you? Personally, I think what I need to learn is not get too personal with it because sometimes uh, I, I look to, tend to look at them as my brothers, mm. which I shouldn't be doing. I should be more professional. Yeah, and you really look out for them. Exactly, and... yeah, but, but I, I tend to go further and become a brother, which doesn't really, uh, sometimes doesn't work. So that's, that's the lesson I think what I need to learn, I'm still learning. <laughs> yeah. Are you strict with them? Yeah, when I need to be. Right. Okay. So it's, it's kind of hard because sometimes we always see, uh, we were just talking about the talent we get from across the island now. And it's so nice to see like representation from all sides. And yes, they do not speak English and that is so not a problem. But it's just so unfortunate that people can just play them out. Yes, uh, th that's why they need guidance and uh, it's not only with English, with everything, their personalities. And they've not been exposed to so many people wanting them at the same exactly. time. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So I think they need to improve themselves as well. There's uh, up to a certain extent, anyone can help, but they need to have the urge to get from here to there. <clears throat> Are you married? No, I'm not. How do you live? Like, who do you live with? I live by myself. <laughs> Can you cook? Very well. Oh, potential. <laughs> Are you looking out? Not really. I'm happy with my life. <laughs> we know what that means now, don't we? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just brought you here. I <laughs> just ruined you a little bit. <laughs> just wanted to ask. So that's it. But just as a Sri Lankan, do you have a British passport? I'll have dual passport, so. <laughs> This is a valuable contestant for our, for our <laughs> boy in the market. I'm telling you, marry him yourself. Do a passport, working with cricket, life is cool. See, this is a way to market yourself. Yeah, you never know. All right, that's great. That's fabulous information we have got. On that note, we need to wrap things up. Thank you so very much for doing what you're doing. Um, would you like to mention some of the names who you're managing? Well, I manage about seven players in the national, current national side. So, Danush Kunatilaka, Avishka Fernando, Kusal Mendis, uh, Patum Nisanka, Lahiru Kumara. Uh, there's few others, so. <laughs> Just dropped out with Lahiru Kumara, that's fine. <laughs> uh, all right, on that note, we need to wrap things up. Thank you so very much for being here, taking the time. Uh, thank you to ISO for hosting us, as always. It's absolutely an honor to be here. We will see you with another cool episode, Two Done on Fire. Till then, you keep smiling. It's a wrap. Bye. <laughs>